Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this lecture with a thought process from Abraham Lincoln. Towering genius disdains a beaten path, its six regions is there though unexplored, but unfortunately we always take a path which is easier, that means taken by others. And let us uh, recall what we learnt in the last lecture, we basically looked at um, about the equilibrium constants, right and equilibrium constant from the reaction rate point of by invoking the law of mass action. But now we will have to look at from the thermodynamics point of view how to determine the equilibrium constant and what is its meaning, right. Because we need to determine the state of chemical equilibrium, right. For that we will have to find out what is the direction in which the chemical reaction is proceeding, right or what is the percentage of extent of reaction is taking place, right. And for that we will have to invoke the second law of thermodynamics, because second law of thermodynamics indicates the direction which the process will be proceeding, right. And we know the second law of thermodynamics for a system that is change in entropy will be greater than equal to dq by t, right. And of course, if it is a reversible process, that will be change in entropy is equal to dq by t. If it is irreversible process, it will be greater, right. And that is the principle what is known as the um, increase in entropy principle. That means, the chemical reaction will be proceeding in the direction of increasing entropy. If it is decreasing, then it will not proceed, right. So, if you want to look at you know for an adiabatic system right, because in the chemical reactions which will be uh, taking place right, will it be adiabatic system or non adiabatic system? For the chemical reactions will you consider adiabatic right, you will not there will be some heat will be going out. But however, for adiabatic system dq will be 0. So, therefore, the change in entropy will be greater than equal to 0, right. Because dq is 0 na, see if it is uh, for adiabatic process, for adiabatic process delta q will be 0, right. So, therefore, change in entropy will be greater than equal to 0. Now, if you look at uh, that in a pictorially, See, change in entropy is increasing. That means the re, the you know equilibrium will be achieved wherever there is a no change in entropy is equal to zero for an adiabatic process. Okay, are you getting? But if it is less than that, that means it is violating the second law of thermodynamic in this region, right? So therefore, it cannot really be change in the this thing. So if you look at this side, what will be? this will be 100 percent what reactant right. This will be 100 percent product, but in between there will be reactant and product right in equilibrium. But keep in mind that if it is a non adiabatic system right, then how will handle? We cannot really apply this one right. So, then how will handle? We will have to basically look at free energy, Gibbs free energy and Helmer's free energy, right. And uh, Gibbs free energy if you look at that is G is equal to H minus T s by definition, 
you might be aware this Gibbs free energy basically thermodynamic potential, one of them is Gibbs free energy, Elmer's free energy is another thermodynamic potential, right. If I differentiate this thing, what I will get d g is equal to d h minus t d s s d t, right, okay. And what is h? h is your enthalpy, enthalpy is nothing but u plus p v, right. So, if I differentiate that thing, I will get d h is equal to d u p d v plus v d p, right. If at a constant temperature and a constant pressure, right, what will happen? Because when you are talking about equilibrium, we will be keeping the pressure constant, temperature constant, otherwise it will be changing, we have seen. So, at constant pressure and temperature, at the constant pressure what will happen? This term will be 0, at constant temperature this term will be 0. So, if I combine this thing, that means, in a, if I say this is equation 1 and this is equation 2 and combine this thing, what I will get? I will get d g is equal to d u plus p d v right minus t d s. Now, this is from the basically Gibbs free energy now uh, and also you can say second law of thermodynamics. Okay. Now, we will have to connect into the heat right because here d q is that there. So, from the first law of thermodynamics we know that d q is equal to d u plus p d v that means, this will be nothing but your d q right. So, therefore, this change in Gibbs free energy is equal to d q minus t d s right. And according to the second law of thermodynamics basically d z will be less than equal to 0 right. Keep in mind that change in Gibbs free energy at a constant temperature and pressure right. Uh, of course, the number of moles are not changing right. If you are adding some more concentration as I told, then it will be also changing less than equal to 0. So, this is the condition under which the equilibrium will be possible and the, that means, some chemical reaction will be going on and when it is equal to 0 right. So, that will be the point of equilibrium. Right, that, that means the reaction will attain its chemical equilibrium when Gibbs free energy or sometimes we call Gibbs function attains minimum value that is change in Gibbs free energy is equal to 0. So, that means in this way the reaction will be proceeding, right, but this is not possible like this line because the second law of thermodynamic being violated d g is greater than 0 but this is d g is less than 0 right. So, therefore, in this region chemical reaction will be see if you look at in this region the reaction chemical reaction proceeds right proceed. This no chemical reaction will be occurring right. So, basically what we will have to do we want to find out the equilibrium composition, then we will have to make sure that you know or kind of use this condition change in Gibbs free energy is equal to 0 for the mixture, right. Now, if you look at like how we will handle this Gibbs free energy of the mixture, how we will do that for a mixture of of ideal gases, we can determine G of mixture. What is that? Summation of N i G i T, right, because there are several mixtures are there and we are saying okay, sum all those things that is the mixture mixture can be let us say for example, we have taken hydrogen oxygen, if you are taking hydrogen oxygen system, 
hydrogen, oxygen, OH, O, H, right, water, all those things will be coming into pictures, right. And this I can be equal to n, you can say total number of spaces, whatever it is there, right. And what is this G I T? Is that gives free energy for higher spaces. And this is basically, if you look at, is the total, right. And this we can write down this G i t is equal to Z i t corresponding to standard state of the you know pressure, one atmosphere pressure plus R u t l n p i divided by p naught and p naught is basically what? Standard atmospheric pressure P naught. So, therefore, I can write down G mixture as right, I can write down here itself right, N i bracket G i T naught plus R u L n P i by P naught right, and another bracket I will have to put. So, let us say this is your equation 1, right. And keep in mind that this T is you know whatever the temperature at which we are finding out basically equilibrium, right. R u T s, yes, you are right. This T is the and now we need to find out change in the gives free energy of the mixture. That means, we will have to differentiate the equation 1, right, by differentiating equation 1, we can get d g mixture is equal to d, right, of this thing, d of n i is equal to if you look at that is d n i right into g i t not plus R u t l n p i by p naught, right. First term I have taken n i and the bracket, then next I will do summation of n i d this term i t naught plus R u l n p i by p naught term. Right. So, if you look at, let us look at this term, uh, right, second term, this is second term, right, and this is your first term, so can I say that this will be 0 kind of things, let us consider. second term only, right. That is n i, I can say d g i t naught, right. I can write down then, oh I am missing here, t will be there, right. R u t, okay. R u t, I will take it out, then d l n p i 
by p naught okay and uh, of course there will be also an i right is that fine is equal to if you look at there won't be any change in the gives free energy right there won't be any change right so this will be zero right what will happen to this term this i can write down n i r u d l n p i by p not there will be t there will be t okay so is equal to if i look at n i right summation of n i right r u t and i can write down this d p i by p i can i write that way this uh, d p l n l n p i p anyway p not is basically a constant right it is is not changing so ln pi uh, if i differentiate what it will be basically it will be dpi right by i and if i sum it right if i take rut if i take and if i sum this thing or uh, rut and then ni dpi by pi right if i sum it up what i will get i will get basically summation of dpi right will be d if i say pi is basically zero can i write this because what is happening you are summing the partial pressure of spaces is equal to the pressure of the mixture and that is remaining constant for constant p p this is basically p of mixture right so therefore it will be zero is that clear so therefore this term also is equal to zero so that means this term is equal to zero so what you will get you will get dz mixture is equal to dni right git 0 plus rut ln pi by p naught is equal to what it would be is equal to 0 at equilibrium at equilibrium are you getting because what we have done we have basically looked at that this term is at equilibrium this is 0 is that clear now keep in mind that we will have to basically determine this g i t right if i will get then i can also looked at it like how we can determine let us say this is your equation 2 what we will do we will now consider a arbitrary reaction whatever we have taken let us consider an arbitrary basically bimolecular reaction a a plus b b going to the product of c moles of species c and d moles of species d and a b c d basically b c d are stoichiometric coefficients
right. <coughs> now, we will have to basically look at change in species, right. How we will do that? We are interested to find out the equilibrium composition. We know if you look at equation 2, this is d g mixture equal to d n i into g i t naught plus r u t ln p i by p naught equal to 0. This condition that means we have to find out what is this change in the moles of mixture. How I am going to do for this reaction? How I am going to find out this d n i? I will have to basically for this reaction if I want to write down what I will have to do for let us say this is I am saying C for above chemical reaction the D G mixture will be basically if I sum it up what will happen this will be change in d n a right into g a t naught plus r u t ln p a divided by p naught plus R u t l n p b by p naught plus plus R u t l n partial pressure of C by p naught Keep in mind this will be capital B, this will be ok. Now, how I will have to find out this and all these things I need to know. I will get for that we will have to invoke law of mass action by using law of mass action for above reaction. What will get? We will get d n a by a is equal to minus d n b by b is equal to d n c by c d n d by d is equal to basically a constant let us say k. So, now what we will do? We will use this thing here in this expression let us say this is 4 right and uh, what I will do I instead of this I will write down basically in this place what I will write down minus a k k is your constant then n b will be in this place minus what b constant in this place c constant this place d constant right and then i'll rewrite this expression equation 4 what i'll get i'll get right and this is equal to what this is equal to 0 is not it at equilibrium at equilibrium right this is equal to 0 and what I will do I will write down g c t naught plus is it I am not missing I am missing something c right then d 
g d t not minus g a right i am doing the same thing you know like this is minus is coming minus is coming a t not minus g b t not right and this is nothing but what delta g isn't it t not of the mixture change in gives to energy of the mixture because all these thing this is i have done something wrong here that is a this will be b yes or no and which is equal to what if you look at i can take this this the right hand side right i will get minus r u t ln p c by p not i can write down here p d by p not divided by p a by p not p b by p not this term we are defining as k p right so therefore i can write down this basically k p will be equal to e minus delta g t not divided by r u t can i write down what is the meaning of this thing if you look at delta g t not is positive value what i'll be getting kp will be less than 1 or not that means reactants are favored if delta g t not is negative value kp is greater than 1 reactants are sorry products are favored keep in mind that this kp is a dimensional quality or non dimensional is it so it is a non dimensional quantity that means it will be unitless okay kp is a non dimensional quantity and kp if you look at is a function of what temperature only it is not a function of pressure yes so we'll stop over here and we'll discuss more about this thing in the next lecture how we can apply this right and how uh, all this uh, what do you call um, values we need to calculate basically we'll have to learn in the next lecture how we'll calculate this value change in uh, gives free energy because if i know this thing right then i can estimate very easily what is kp right thank you very much